Hello, everyone. My guest today is Don Simpson. He has pioneered the use of customer engagement to drive revenue for global brands for three decades, first in building inside sales operations, then leading in the use of live sales chat. And now he's pioneering AI to score website visitors conversion potential to trigger optimal customer engagement. Don, you ready to take us to the top? Yeah, you bet. Thanks, Nathan. That's a lot of buzzwords. Break it down for me. The website is lift-ai.com. What are you guys doing? So what we're, we're doing is we we had a live chat uh, service for the last 15 years where we had a BPO companies would outsource to us to engage visitors on their website and uh, convert those visitors into customers. And we worked on straight commission. So we'd start out and we'd go in and we'd look at their websites and we'd say, well, here's how much potential revenue that we think uh, we can create for you. Um, one Fortune 500 customer we worked for, they were doing $150,000 a year in revenue in live chat. And we looked at their analytics and did a forecast. So we think we can do 15 million and we did 16 and a half million in the first year. So now that was when we started that business, there was probably four or five chat companies in the world. And now everybody and everywhere, you know, this chat uh, market has exploded. Um, so over the years, uh, we've tried to, we've been, as we've invested in building out that analytics and building out that technology, you know, it, it became increasingly more powerful. Uh, and once we really started to figure it out, we thought, hey, you know what, this is something that we want to take uh, that experience and background that we have in building and using that technology for our own purposes and, and deploy it. You know, so that customers can use it them, themselves and get so the Don, it's now it's it. now pure SaaS. What do customers pay you on average to use the technology? You know, we're still playing with the pricing on it. We've got a I think a, like an entry point of fifty five hundred dollars a month. Um, it's kind of up to a hundred thousand uh, visitors a month, and then over a hundred thousand visitors, so it's at eighty five hundred a month. But I mean, we launched this. We actually launched the business on the first of March, uh, which was. Uh, weird timing given COVID. So we're still, we're working and still playing with that, but that's, that's where so it's are you pre-revenue right then Don today? Any customers or no? Yeah, we've got eight clients in production. Um, we were hoping to, to hit a hundred uh, in MRR at some point this year and we've already hit that. So we feel pretty good. I mean, part of COVID. Yeah, so just to be clear, Don, you're doing, you're doing north of a hundred thousand dollars per month in revenue. Yes. Okay. Got it. So that's eight customers paying what on average 12,000 a month. Yeah. Yeah. In that range. That, that's to me, that's super impressive. I mean, how do you basically launch from scratch and land a bunch of, I mean, these are $120,000 a year contracts. You're landing right off the bat for a chat AI tool. Well, it's, it's, it's a, it's a really a revenue tool. So, you know, what we did historically is with our BPO, you know, we were looking at our, you know, a minimum entry point would be about $50,000 a month. So, you know what i guess we're we're used to dealing in that world and in that space and typically we would go and depending on you know what the volume in their acv was we would need somewhere between 15 and 40 percent of the revenue in order to make it viable uh and now with this tool we're trying to figure out well how can we get in we know it's another piece of technology in their stack somewhere around you know eight ten twelve percent maximum is where we're trying to get to with the incremental revenue that we're generating and what we get compensated for but that's really, it's because we, we went from, hey, we're going to do this, we do it all as a BPO, to now it's a SaaS play and a technology product. Totally separate businesses? Yes. Walk me through how you spun, so just to be clear, you ran an, eight. what was the agency name? Were you doing the BPO stuff? MarketLink. Okay, marketlink.com? Yeah, and that okay. business uh, we ran for you know almost 30 years and have been running for almost 30 years and it's still in, in existence today. But this technology business, this Lyft AI, is a, a new product company that we launched. In. Don, let's stay on the market link for a second. So launched in 1990, been around for almost 30 years. How much revenue did Market Link do in 2019? Oh, 2019. I'm not sure. You know, we 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 peaked at about 10 million uh, in, what year? in revenue. In I would think that would be 2018, maybe 2019. Okay. okay. Um, Does Market we have Link high own? Do they own any portion of Lyft AI? I know they're separate company. Okay, got it. So there wasn't any conversation around, hey, we're spinning Lyft AI out of MarketLink. MarketLink should own a portion of Lyft AI. They should be. They should have equity. 
Uh, there's a, a, a change in, and transfer of uh, IP and and uh, and so forth as a result. But it, it was, functionally, it was, though, how does that work? I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of people listening right now that are stuck inside of an agency. They use a little side piece of software to service customers. They love to spin it out, but they don't know where to start. Walk me through how you actually did that economically. Well, we took uh, economically. Um, because I, I owned, I started MarketLink, and so I own MarketLink. So for me to go and take and separate these two is really relatively. Oh, 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 you owned 100 percent of MarketLink. Yes. Oh, yeah. got it. It's not like you so have I boot, partners. I, I bootstrapped that business just that I started just out of university, and now I've been bootstrapping Lyft AI. So it's just it's just me negotiating with me setting I up. See. How am I going to set this up to move well, that's, forward? Well, that's so it makes it a little simpler. So you personally own 100 percent of Lyft AI, the tech tool. Yes. I see. I see. Okay. That makes way more sense. Got it. So, I mean, what's the team look like today? How many people? Well, we've got eight FTEs and, um, you know, we've, we historically, what we did is we, you know, we had a team, uh, in India that was part of the market link business. We actually had a few iterations on this. It took us about four or five years to really figure this out and make it work, make uh, what work? to the point to make the technology work in Lyft AI where, you know, it was, it works and it's accurate and, and, and to be able to operationalize based on, you know, the, the, the scores that we're gleaning from the technology, um, to, to really make it sing. It took quite a few years. It wasn't like we just said, Hey, we did this overnight. Um, and we had a, a fairly significant team in India. We outsourced a bunch of, uh, of the development to a team in Russia. And then just kind of over the years, as we iterate, we got to the point say, okay, this product is, you know, this technology works and it's good. Uh, but now we've got a pretty small team internally just to continue to fine tune um, while we see and try to find that product market fit. And then so we'll eight, uh, look at eight scale full-time again. folks, how many of those full-time folks are engineers? Three. Okay, three. Any quota carrying sales reps besides you? <laughs> yeah, well, actually, yeah, we have uh, one. Okay, oh, fair enough. How do you set their quota? Uh, so we're looking. How do you set their quota? I guess that's a good question. We're looking for a million dollars a year in new revenue from. Got it. And so, do you fall through the ratio where if they hit a million dollars in new AR added, they're they're making about one fifth of that in terms of total earnings? Yeah, it costs it costs a little more than that in the first year. You don't get things off the ground, but that sure. would definitely be. Yep, yep, yep. Interesting. Do you think you can you can hire ten AEs and sort of follow those same economics? Well, I certainly hope so. You know, because we did we've done this um, kind of one iteration of our business was outbound demand gen BDRs. You know, we worked for companies like Xerox in the '90s doing that kind of work. We worked for you know, like Microsoft in the '90s doing that kind of work. So we have that in our DNA. So I'm my thinking and focus is is we should be able to go after. Um, you know, the market we're trying to serve with a, with a, a pretty, a pretty clear outbound approach. You know, there's about 8,000 companies that we identify that have 50,000 plus visitors, uh, a, a month on the, on the, and traffic on their website. Wait, and say that I again. Think, you're, you're targeting how many targeting 5,000, 8,000 8, companies. Yeah. That with how many hits? With 50,000 visitors plus a month. Plus we know what their chat tool is. Cause that's what our, because we've worked extensively in this chat space and working with companies like Drift and LiPerson. And so we thought, you know, we really tried to hone in and narrow our focus from a go-to-market perspective on that group. That's compelling. Um, do you use tools like Built With or Firmographic and Technographic tools to find that list where the JavaScript code from Drift has been installed or Intercom has been installed? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's exactly what we did. Yeah. That's really smart. Yeah. So how do you, like, walk, like you find me, I'm your target. You call me up, you go, Nathan, screw Intercom. Try Lyft AI. I mean, how do you convince me to switch off my current JavaScript install to you? Well, we don't. We say so you continue to use whatever you're using. We're just going to enhance it. So, um, you know, one of the companies, the initial uh, companies that, uh, you know, we've launched and got a testimonial. We've got quite a few good testimonials, actually, from a short period of time. Uh, but one of them, a company called Point Click Care, that um, we increased their, their lead conversions or, or number of conversions on their website by 168% in the first month. Um, and, 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 and so, and that's not, um, that might be a little high, but I think the lowest one we've got so far, I think is 63%. Mm -hmm. And so, cause we're used to working from that mindset and that model of, Hey, we're, we can use our technology to help and, you know, define 
who is a good prospective customer on your site. And bots don't work for everybody. I mean, bots yeah. don't sell like salespeople do. Maybe one day they will, but they don't today. So what we what we do, we go in, we look at their their website uh, traffic, and then we say, based on the scores, we would suggest that people who fit this profile, and it works with anonymous visitors. It's it, how are it's, you scoring them? Are you reverse engineering an IP address and then like a, an employee count at that IP address company or something, or how how are you scoring? It's all based on behavior because we we did over the course of the fifteen years with the BPO. We, we profiled about a billion visitors and we had 14 million live sales interactions. So we took and looking at all of that conversion data, we can go and we can say, well, based on the behavior of that visitor on the website, even if they're anonymous, and that's where, you know, there's, there's a lot of companies out there that are doing that IP reveal or, you know, but, but ours works on and with an anonymous visitor data based on the behavior and what they're consuming on the website so we can identify and predict the conversion potential and intent and then reach out and engage those people commensurate with that score so if it's a really high scoring visitor we're gonna say well let's get them to a salesperson sure, right away. Sure, sure. yeah that makes right? complete sense do you, yeah, do you, yeah, do you pay, pay for scoring, low scoring do, visitor, even you can still use bots but you just have to be I don't know, more uh, calculated in the way you engage the visitors. Yeah, on your lower, low, has to be lower touch. The economics don't work as nicely. Um, yeah. do, you, do you pay for Bombora data or Zoom Info data or full contact data to enrich the data that you're tracking? Not yet. Okay, so really, you, you really you don't pay anything out to other any other data providers? No. Huh, no. fascinating. Trying to okay. position it as you can use all of those things. You still have a lot of vis- anonymous visitors on your website that you have no idea who they are and what they do. They may have very high purchase intent or... You know, there, there may be somebody on your site that doesn't necessarily reveal themselves. If you do have an IP reveal, you could say, based on our score, based on looking at the behavior of this visitor, we think this is a great opportunity and potential that you could do a BDR outreach for somebody who's been on your site but didn't necessarily engage you. Yeah. Are you profitable today? Or are you reinvesting everything back in growth? Oh, I've been reinvesting everything. Now I'm just trying to go on that pretty much break even line. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so we're, we're bobbling up you know, a little bit above, a little bit below every month. And as we grow, I'm just going to continue to invest and build. Don, what would you value the company at today? That's a very good question. I don't, <laughs> I've heard some crazy numbers. Um, What's the craziest? Well, I mean, somebody, it's, it, you know, I, I, the multiples with some of this stuff seem a little off uh, for me, um, maybe as high as 30 million, but, um, you know, I don't know. That seems a little nuts to me, to be honest with you. So it's like that's 25 X uh, on your current run, right? Yeah. But yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we got lots of work to do and lots of building to do. And um, let me know. ask the question more directly, make it real. David Cancel approaches you once to buy Lyft AI to enrich Drift's tool. Um, he offers you a uh, 7x multiple on your current revenue. So call it, he offers you eight or nine million bucks, all cash up front, no earn out. Do you take the deal? Hmm. I, I'm not, I don't know. I don't know if I'd want to answer that. I actually met David Kinsel. I, I, I can't tell you how much respect I have for him. And uh, yeah, I don't think that's a question that I want to answer. Have but, you signed uh, any LOIs to sell the company in the past year? No. Very good. Building, building, building. I love that. Last question here. Churn. Any any gross churn? None yet. None yet. Very cool. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, again, you launched it. This is what's impressed me. You launched this thing in March. And it sounds like you sort of reached out some to some folks that you already had relationships with via your BPO business. You closed them. <laughs> you went from zero to a million dollar run rate in under basically six months, which is really impressive. So congratulations. Um, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, favorite business book. Mm. I like that uh, Made in America. So I read it three times back to back to back, actually about 20 years ago. It was amazing. Number the, two is uh, Sam Walton, right? Yeah. Yeah. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Uh, it's funny you say David Kensell, but uh, there's a few like that in our space that, you know, it's actually crazy how many good CEOs are, but he's certainly one. You should go by Olark and then compete with David. Enrich Olark's basic chat tool with your AI and sort of machine learning and then go head to head. Yeah. Yeah, it's like I, I actually said this guy on my advisory board, and it was David as well, and he was on their advisory board. And I said, I always said I wanted to play on the tour, and but I just never knew Tiger was that good. You know, once then you start you start playing at that level, and you're going, wow, this guy is good. And he, I mean, would you is, would you ever go and raise some capital to go buy? You know, Olark's doing 12 million in terms of run rate right now, but they have no interest in like scaling. You clearly sort of have this other thing you can add to a live chat tool. Would you ever go buy a company like Olark and then scale? Possibly. Yeah. And where would you get the capital to do that? I mean, it sounds like you're personally wealthy, but you'd probably use some other finances too. Mm, we're in the midst of actually looking to uh, raise money because I think if we're going to be really successful with this, it's going to take a different kind of war chest. How do I get in on that deal? Mm, 
I might talk to you soon, Nathan. I okay, will good. Following you for a while as well. I want in, Don. I want in. I'm gonna be. I'm not publishing this episode unless I get in. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm kidding. It'll go live no matter what. I love your story, but I'd, lo- I'd love to be in. All right, number three. Talk to me about your favorite online tool for building your company besides your own. Mm, I, you know, I don't know. Twitter's pretty amazing. You know, if I, I mean, just even following guys, like I would say once a week, Jason Lemkin says something on Twitter that I follow that I find, wow. You know, I wish I would have known that 20 years ago. So, uh, Great yeah, guy. Pretty, I'll say Twitter. Number four, how many hours of sleep, Don, you get every night? Mm, about six and a half. Not bad. In situation, married, single kids? I'm married, three kids. Three kiddos. Wow. How old are you? I'm 54. 54. Last question. Take us back 33 years. What's something you wish you knew when you were 20? Mm, I would swing for the fences. <laughs> Guys, there you have it. Market Link was his first company launched in 1990. It was in marketing agency, did about 10 million uh, at its peak in 2018. Then realized, you know what? I got to spin out this Lyft AI product, which is essentially, you know, using conversational marketing in a real sort of revenue attribution way. He launched it just a couple months ago in March 2020. Already has eight customers paying on average $13,000 per month. So six figure ACVs right off the bat, broke a million dollar run rate, doing about 1.2 in terms of ARR run rate right now. Team of eight people building us, three engineers, first quota carrying sales rep just joined with a million dollar quota. We'll see how that goes. Bootstrapped, which we love. Don, we're rooting for you. Thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you, Nathan. I appreciate it. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live, and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it, and the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right, I'll be in the comments. See ya.